About 50 years ago, a new gadget came on the market, the repercussions of which have affected almost everybody. Happily, though, those of us who now work in the industry it helped to found no longer have to go through all this rigmarole every time we go to work. That gadget was a television set, and half a century ago it demanded that those who appeared on it got properly made up, and that meant blue lips and lots of white face powder. One of the pioneers of television was a Scotsman, John Logie Baird. And back in the 20s, using rather crude apparatus, he succeeded in transmitting pictures over short distances. By 1930, televisors, as they were called, were on sale to the general public for about 26 pounds. The picture was actually viewed down here through a magnifying glass, and behind it, a screen about the size of a matchbox. Next week, London Science Museum will open an exhibition covering 50 years of television and broadcasting. And we thought it appropriate for tomorrow's world to remember the Scotsman who made it all possible by trying to transmit for the first time in 45 years a Baird-type television picture. And we're going to do it on a lovingly recreated Baird system. Now, his picture quality wasn't very good by today's standards, which is why I'm wearing all this makeup. Baird's picture was made up of 30 lines scanned vertically. And he did this with a beam of light and a rotating drum of mirrors, 30 mirrors in all. The performer sits in front of the mirrors with the light beam scanning him. Two photo cells then pick up the reflected light from his face and the signals are fed down a series of cables to a transmitter and on to the receiver, which contains a neon bulb. Just in front is a metal disc, a spinning disc, and in it are 30 tiny holes, too small to see as it goes round. But as it spins, it should be possible to see the image of the performer looking through these holes, just level with a neon tube. Incidentally, early television pictures were not black and white at all. They were pink because of the colour of the neon light. And what's more, they're so dim that our studio cameras are just not sensitive enough to do the job for us. So, by way of contrast, perhaps, we're using a piece of tomorrow's world to look at the bad image. It's a new surveillance camera, so sensitive that it can almost see in the dark. So that's the setup. Let's now try and make a television picture in the way they did it in the late 20s and early 30s. And I must say, first of all, it is a most peculiar experience sitting here with a light scanning your face 30 times a second. I suspect anybody suffering from epilepsy wouldn't be able to tolerate this for very long. Now, we have to do this in almost total darkness because the cells are extremely sensitive. So let's put all the studio lights out, switch on the bed system, and up it comes. I sent him myself in the screen. Perhaps for the first time in 45 years, over the air, a picture of a television performer, yes, it's me, <laughs> on the Baird system. And if you would like to know what it felt like to be a television star of the early 30s, well, you can try this for yourself if you visit the Science Museum in South Kensington when the exhibition opens. But I think you'll have to bring your own dicky bow if you want to do the job properly. So there it is, a little bit of history, recreated on tomorrow's world. And until next week, from all of us in the studio, good night.